today we're talking about spots dark spots sunspots or whatever you want to call them we're talking about them stay tuned that's coming up next Welcome back, Christine Beyer here, licensed esthetician for 21 years, and I realize I got a lot of visual stimulation going on here. I've got my spots, I wanted to wear this because this is what spots look like when they start to break up, and we're all working on our spots from summer. So sunspots, we sort of collect them as we get older, and when they happen, they generally happen over time, and it's an upregulation of our melanocytes. And those are the cells that produce melanin, which deposit color to our skin, give us our skin color. And in the case of spots, the whole process has gone a little bit haywire, and that production of melanin is upregulated. There's basically three areas that we can go in to fight this process. So if we think about what happens and where pigmentation happens, it happens deep down in our skin at the basal layer. So at that dermal epidermal junction where dead tissue meets live tissue. And so this is why when we have sunspots, we need to do some sort of exfoliation so those active ingredients can penetrate and get to the level that they need to be to affect change in sunspots. So how do we do this? First of all, let's talk about the sunspot process. Getting sunspots and getting a tan is a natural process of the skin. The, the melanocytes produce the melanin and they come out and they mushroom out and sort of envelop and put an umbrella over the DNA of the cell to protect it from UV rays. If you look at these pictures, you'll see that here's a little melanocyte and they make melanosomes and those melanosomes come out and they get deposited into our keratin or our skin cells. This whole process gets started, one step back is tyrosinase, which triggers the releasing of the melanosomes and melanocytes or the releasing of pigmentation. So, so many products come out that have tyrosinase inhibitors to effectively stop the enzyme that makes the skin spit out the color, right? And so things like Burberry extract, licorice, vitamin C, azelaic acid, niacinamide. There's a really interesting one called daisy leaf extract that's very powerful. I think I said Burberry, go to cola. There's just so many of them. And so they basically stop or block tyrosinase from even forming and starting the inflammation cascade that is getting hyperpigmentation or spots. And so we can deposit those to stop that process. But what happens once it's already done its process and it's deposited the color into our skin cells? Well then, all we can really do is exfoliate off dead cells. Acids are really good for this. If you have sensitive skin, I would use enzymes in this case because enzymes don't disrupt live tissue. They don't go after live tissue and they're very gentle. And so if you have an inflammatory process that is pigmentation, then you wanna make sure your skin is as calm and as fed with antioxidants as possible to squelch any inflammation. So we wanna really feed the skin all these anti-inflammatories and keep it calm. I have an example of a neighbor who has been threatening to come in to see me, but she's got a bunch of stuff going on. She has some melasma, she has garden variety sunspots, and she loves the sun. I don't think I've ever seen her without a tan. I've never seen her without a tan. She always looks excessively tan to me. She just does not wear sunscreen. And so I'm like, red flag, red flag. <laughs> this is not like my optimal client. This, this is not somebody I can do anything with because when we're fighting 
sunspots, since they are triggered by the sun, if we're not using sunscreen, it's like dieting all day and eating Oreo cookies at night. It doesn't work. You guys know I love my Oreo cookies thing. I don't even eat Oreos, but they are good. That's, that is the first step before any of this. I know everybody's heard it and all the YouTubers say it, but there's a reason for it. I think darker skin tones especially are not conditioned to wearing sunscreen. I mean, I have to run after my daughter and my husband when we're at the beach and like sunscreen them down. And on a daily basis, they don't either. Although I would love to change that. I, I have to find something light enough for my husband to appreciate and he would put on his skin. But yeah, darker skin tones, you know, you're not really inoculated with the sunscreen, sunscreen, sunscreen thing from birth like us uber white people are. So it's, it's an acquired skill that we really have to think about and put on every day if you're working on sunspots. And you know, the darker the skin, the more prone to pigmentation issues. So it's really a good habit to get into. And I'm so glad that there's more awareness of that now, but, and things are changing. But yeah, if we're not doing sunscreen, might as well not even watch the rest of this video. I mean, not, nothing, nothing works. You can spend all this money on all these things to get rid of pigmentation, but if you're not doing sunscreen, it's just gonna come right back. And sometimes worse, depending on what you're using. So another thing that is a tyrosinase inhibitor, and it is, they do sell some OTC, but they it's prescription-based, it's hydroquinone. And hydroquinone is hard on the skin. It's hard on the skin. And I think if you really want to get rid of pigmentation, I mean, it has its place. If you're the kind of person that does not go out in the sun very often, but yet you want to get your skin as bright as possible, you can go on a course of this and stay on hydroquinone for a couple months and then go off and give your skin a break. And this always reminds me of a story. A friend of mine, we were in our 20s, and she had two big spots. I mean, it, this is from massive sun exposure from very early on, because she's Venezuelan, and she just, they were just massive spots. They were even bigger than marbles on her, her cheeks, and she was really embarrassed by them. So she started going to this dermatologist, and back in the day, all they had was hydroquinone. Ret Retin-A, hydroquinone. I don't even know if Retin-A, I think it was out by then. So she worked on them and worked on them and worked on them and worked on them and she looked great. She, they were light, as light as they would be, uh, could be. So they were probably about 70% lighter. And then we went on a trip to Puerto Rico. <laughs> and let me tell you, she put that white zinc, just had the spots just covered, just like a thick layer of sunscreen and by the end of the vacation, they had just popped back out with a vengeance, it seemed like they were darker and bigger than before. And this rebound pigmentation, I see it a lot with hydroquinone. And that's why I say, anytime you're working on pigmentation problems, give yourself three months, three months of these three steps that I'm talking about. If you don't see a difference in three months, then it's time to do the lasers, the CO2, IPL, IPL would be where you start and then you could go into lasers and Fraxel later on if you wanted to really get aggressive with your treatments. But the hydroquinone, oh gosh, it's just so hard on the skin and the skin will tolerate it and it sort of bludgeons the melanocytes into not producing more. But the second you go off of it and you challenge the skin a little bit with some major sun rays like Puerto Rico, boom, they'll just come right back and many times darker and worse than before. So I tend to like to layer up. There, there are so many good products on the market now and I wanna talk about one that helps stop that melanogenesis process. So my Brighten the Day, this contains the daisy leaf extract, licorice, berberry extract, Go to Cola, Uva Ursi, Texahasadesyl Ascorbate, which is a fat soluble form of vitamin C. I mean, this has everything but the kitchen sink thrown into it to suppress the melanogenesis process or the spotting process. And it also has 
arbutin in it and just a, it's, it will soften fine lines over time if used twice a day so it's a very interesting product so it's made to help with cellular turnover and suppress pigmentation before it starts so this is one of my best sellers it's called brighten the day so once they've been released another thing you can do besides the acids is retinol because retinol is going to help regulate at a deeper level skin turnover and the sloughing off process so it does help with sort of interrupting that transfer once it's been released of the melanin to the cell helps sort of interrupt that so those are the three steps it would be sunscreen first and foremost or don't even bother with the other steps and then you'll want to do a tyrosinase inhibitor and then you'll want to do retinol or something that interrupts that transferring process once the pigment has been released so we can go in with something like the sleep on it retinol this is a great vegan retinol it's very very well tolerated i love this because you get all the benefits of vitamin a without all the sloughing and the craziness i mean this is so well tolerated this has a sea vegetable in it that mimics the results you get from retinol and this has the highest amount of actual retinol that's encapsulated so it tends to be gentler on the skin this also has allantoin this has mushroom extract this has aloe vera msm which is a detoxifier, plant stem cells, niacinamide, beta-glucan, colloidal silver. I mean, it, it is just a wonderful, well-tolerated retinol. So between sunscreen, your tyrosinase inhibitor, and your retinol, give it a good three months. If you are still unhappy and want more brightening, then you're gonna to have to look at chemical peels. You're gonna to have to look at IPL. You're gonna to have to look at a CO2 laser, Fraxel, something like that that's really going to go deep. Another thing I want to say is if you feel your pigmentation and it feels raised, because I get a lot of clients who are older and they'll have all sorts of <laughs> growths and barnacles and things that are sort of collecting on their face, and if it's raised, chances are it is fibroma related or something else caused by the sun. I would have your face checked, by the way, at least once every year from your dermatologist and but if it's raised and it's been cleared by your dermatologist you can you can have those either burnt away or frozen away just know that usually products at home are not going to do much for raised pigmentation that that requires physical removal okay so thanks for watching and i'll talk to you all soon bye now